um, right, I'll just try that again. So this is a lovely shot of, um, of the UCD campus and uh, I'll get started again on, um, on talking about the graduate certificate, diploma and masters in primary care. So we'll just go through why to do the postgraduate course, or why, why you might be interested, a little bit about the structure of the course, um, fees, uh, module details, some contributors, that kind of thing. Um, so I can't tell, are you able to see the full screen there or is my Zoom, are my Zoom windows appearing across the bottom? Yes, we can see the full screen of the presentation only. Okay, oh perfect, that's great. Um, so uh, yeah, so why do a postgraduate in primary care? So there's a number of different reasons depending on your background. Um, many doctors, GPs and allied health professionals might have a special interest in this area. It gives you a university level qualification and recognition of your special interest. And the idea is, um, is to improve the interface between primary and secondary care. It's in line with the Sláinte Care report and integrated care generally for, for patient-centred uh, care, improved care for our patients, reduced waiting times for interventions for things like joint injections, and it can also add a revenue stream to your practice. Um, why this particular course? So um, it's, uh, it's, deliver it's blended online delivery, so suitable for busy clinicians. Um, it involves two to four practical days each semester. Um, and uh, we've got some really good, well-known uh, specialist contributors. Um, it is very relevant and applicable to daily work. And um, it obviously recognized qualification from UCD um, it, it kind of helps you in your practice and career development and hopefully once we get back on campus uh, for some of the practical days you might also have access to some of the student resources at UCD like the gym, library, campus, that kind of thing. Um, so we can talk through a little bit on, on what, uh, what the practicalities might be given the current situation but I'm just going to run you through the, the general plan. So um, in year one, for the full master's course, in starting in autumn, we have you have your specialist module. So for the orthopedics track, it's orthopedics one. Um, we are also doing a mental health care track, so obviously you don't need to worry about that. Um, and with your orthopedics one module, you do the research module. Then following on from that in spring, uh, you do your second orthopedics module and then the primary care module. Once you've done three modules, you can actually exit uh, with 30 credits and a graduate certificate in primary care. Um, the two core modules would be the, the, um, the two orthopedics modules, and then you could choose between research and primary care as your third module. Um, then the second year, we've got uh, the pl clinical placement, which would be in orthopedics, um, and that gives you another 20 credits. So once you've got the four credits, for the four modules done from year one, and then your clinical placement, you then have 60 credits and you could exit with a graduate diploma in primary care. And um, those who want to go on and do the dissertation, then uh, that's worth 30 credits and you can um, exit with your master's. So just um, that's just so that you can see clearly in year one, the specialist modules, orthopedics one and research module are from September to Christmas. And then the specialist module starting in January uh, would be orthopedics too, and then that's running parallel with the primary care module up until April, May. And the second year then, a little bit more detail about the clinical placement um, is that we foresee it as being 10 eight hour days. And for our orthopedics uh, course, that would look at, we'd be looking at trying to get it into a week period of time. So one week in a private hospital. Um, so five, uh, five eight-hour days, that might be somewhere like the Beacon, and then another week uh, at a public hospital such as the Mater or St. Vincent's Hospital. Um, and the idea with kind of fitting it into a week is that you'll get to know the people at the hospital better, they'll get to know you, and it's easier then as well in terms of arranging it around your usual clinical work. And then a little uh, information about the dissertation um, is just that it's to do with an original piece of research. It will be supervised by a member of ECD faculty and it's meant to be related to your own clinical area. So if you're a physiotherapist or if you're a nurse or if you're a GP or an emergency doctor, um, it would be relevant to the kind of cases that you're seeing and like re reviewing your own practice and improving your own patient care. Um, so, uh, Professor Seamus Morris is our lead clinician uh, for the orthopaedics um, side of things. 
Um, he's uh, I've put up a little bit about his uh, his background there, and you can see see all of this on the web page. But um, his his specialist area would be um, trauma and spine surgery. Um, so, uh, but but he is our our lead orthopedic man. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I I won't go through all of that. I'll let you read that at another time. Um, then uh, <clears throat> we've got uh, contributor Mr. Keith Sinnott. Um, he does trauma service um, spine as well, uh, hip and knees as well. And um, I'm sorry, I don't have photos and bios for all of these people, but they are also contributing. So we've got Professor Donnelly, um, who's a rheumatologist, Professor Kane, uh, Professor Turlock O'Donnell, um, Mr. Nelligan, Mr. Lunn, shoulder specialist, um, Dr. Byrne. You may recognize some of these names anyway. They're um, well, well known in Dublin. Um, in the uh, in their orthopedic specialist fields. Um, okay, uh, just a little bit about the kind of academic contributors. So um, Ruth Whelan is a physiotherapist and manager of the UCD Beacon Hospital Academy. So um, she's helping uh, in terms of um, integrating the, the staff at the Beacon and uh, their contributions to the uh, to the program. And Catherine Kane is also helping us with that as well. Um, Professor Walter Cullen is um, my boss here at UCD, so he's the uh, Professor of Urban General Practice, um, and uh, he, he'll be involved in teaching, student feedback, um, and research activities. Um, that's me, um, I'm a GP um, and, uh, and a lecturer in the Department of General Practice, so um, I'll be kind of coordinating everything, and uh, I'm also contributing in places as well. So this is our web page, um, and there's a little uh, a link down the bottom for those of you who haven't found it on the School of Medicine website. And again, it's just if you want more detail, it has a list of um, uh, you know questions. To, uh, gives it gives more detail. So um, it, um, and we have the teaching faculty started, but we still, we have a little bit more to add in there, a little bit more detail. Um, okay, we're on to the fees area then. So the EU fees for 2020 and um, if you're doing the graduate certificate uh, that's three modules worth 10 credits each and uh, the cost is 4200 for the graduate diploma which is the four modules in the first year and then the clinical placement in the second year it costs 8400 and for the full msc it's 12 1600 and um, all of these i think are payable in installments and there's lots more information on that web link um, on the UCD website. Um, why have I repeated this? Oh yes, it's because I wanted to just talk about recognition of prior learning. So um, the, there is a potential for reduced fees if you already have some qualifications in this area. Um, uh, for instance, the, uh, the ICGP FSEM a diploma in musculoskeletal medicine we're recognizing for 10 credits and um, uh, yeah so if, if, if that's something that you're interested in um, just get in touch with me directly and we can we're basically doing it on a case-by-case -case basis um, okay a little detail about the modules just to give you a rough idea of the kind of um, uh, time input that you would need. So online content over the 14 weeks is about 70 hours. So it's roughly two hours of reading self-directed online content per week. Then in terms of webinars and seminars, um, there's a webinar alternate weeks for each module, but because you'll have two modules running parallel, it ends up being a module every other week. So for instance, the orthopedic modules will be on the even weeks, and then your primary care module or your research module would be um, on the odd numbered weeks. Um, we have the, the practicals. Now, I, I was saying about how we might be having to adapt this depending on access to campus. So we're kind of prepared to move the practical days from the first semester to after January and do four practical days in January for orthopedics if needs be. And we're kind of going to have to see how that goes. At the moment, we're hoping we'll be able to do them um, between September and December at, you know, in person. Um, but we will obviously be following public health advice on that. Um, reflective clinical practice, this is to do with cases that you're going to be seeing while you're studying and maybe bringing back to the group to discuss learning points, that kind of thing. Um, so, oh, specified learning activities, a bit of group work for you. 
um, uh, some more self-directed learning. So we're going to be giving you links to papers that you can read, read, read in a little bit more about things in your own time as well. So that's, that's a little bit about the workload. Uh, the primary care components of this master's, um, there are two modules common to the master's in orthopedics and also the mental health care um, programs. The first one in September is the research module. Um, so that is uh, 10 credits and then the primary care module, which I'm coordinating. Um, so uh, Deborah Wallace is coordinating this research method and scholarship enhancing clinical practice module. So this is really the foundation for developing, you know, the, the skills to be able to do audit, to be able to write a dissertation. And um, so you'll be taught how to conduct a literature review and um, uh, explain evidence around your chosen subject and um, designing clinical audit relevant to your own personal practice and um, managing data um, producing quality improvement projects and reports, understanding different approaches to research, being familiar with research ethics, like where you store data, how you anonymize it, um, you know, who can access it afterwards. All of that is really important as well, and that will be covered. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, successfully completing a research project, conducting regular case reviews, reflective practice techniques. So it's really important uh, for kind of ongoing uh, study. And then in the second semester, we've got contemporary issues in primary care and general practice. So this will be covering things like um, developments in management and treatment of common conditions for patients in primary care, but also thing, you know, uh, topics uh, by experts in public health, for, insta uh, for instance, neuro neurodiversity, which would be learning disability, ADHD, um, quality improvement, business strategies, chronic diseases, um, healthcare systems, integrated care. So we're trying to put in a lot of relevant stuff and interesting stuff there. Um, and then uh, some, uh, some group work and presentations. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, the, my email is there, sheila.lockman at ucd.ie and primarycare.medicine at ucd.ie will get you to our administrator, Sinead. Um, and either of us would be happy to help you with any questions you might have.